what is very likely to be the hottest July ever. As people across, the applause is not for that, I promise you. As people across the country and the world suffer from deadly and devastating heat, fires, floods, and storms. On the bright side, we are also here today as we approach the one-year anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act enactment into law, the single biggest investment our nation has ever made in climate, clean energy, and environmental justice by far. This new law is already supercharging our clean energy economy and creating good-paying, family-sustaining jobs that don't require four years degrees. According to Climate Power's latest hot off the presses report, it has already spurred $278 billion in new investments and more than 170,000 new jobs across 44 states. I should also note more than half of, these, of this new clean energy job growth is in districts and communities that are currently represented by Republicans. As this record-breaking heat rages on, it has never been more important or more urgent that we double down on this progress. For our climate, for our jobs, for our wallets, for environmental and racial justice, for national security, and so much more. Yet day after day after day, extreme MAGA Republicans in Congress are threatening this progress, this progress in their own districts at great costs to their own constituents. Why? Simply to shamelessly push the failed, dirty energy policies of the past and massive giveaways to big oil and to other polluters. In stark contrast, the congressional Democrats who are here already, those who will be arriving after their vote, and so many other Democrats, along with President Biden, Vice President Harris, and all of the staff who worked so hard throughout the administration on, on Capitol Hill to pass the Inflation Reduction Act. They showed incredible leadership and we are forever grateful. Now they are all in to defend and to implement this new law and to make more clearly badly needed progress. We're so grateful to the members who we expect to be joining us in speaking today. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, excuse me, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer Senators Ron Wyden, Debbie Stabenow, and Tina Smith, and Representatives Hank Johnson, Nanette Barragon, Sharice Davids, and Greg Stanton. Thank you to all these members for everything that they do, that you do. We are with you at every step. We're going to start to hear from them first. We're also going to hear from some incredible leaders, Rico Albakaitis from IBEW and Jason Walsh from the Blue Green Alliance. But first, we will go to Congresswoman Sharice Davids from Kansas. Thank you all. Congressman Stanton and I were trying to decide if we were going to go based on last name or who has the hottest district right now. I'm sure he's going to talk about that. Um, well, uh, good afternoon morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's, it's really good uh, to get the chance to join all of you today. Uh, I know that the senators will join us here in a bit, but I, I'm really, really glad to see the number of people who have come out uh, for us to discuss uh, to, to discuss this. My name is Sharice Davids. I represent uh, Kansas's third congressional district, which is in the Kansas City metro area. Uh, it's one of the five urban areas expected to experience the greatest rise in temperatures in the coming decades. Uh, we need, I mean, frankly, we need innovative solutions here. We need to uh, be as innovative as possible when it comes to addressing this crisis, when it comes to uh, growing our economy and uh, and then leaving behind a healthier world for our children and grandchildren. Uh, it's one of the biggest reasons that I was so proud to vote for the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, this is the most uh, significant piece of federal legislation in our country's history uh, uh, aimed at tackling the climate crisis while lowering costs for hardworking families uh, and especially the families in Kansas that I'm representing, uh, but of course across the entire country. And 
since we got this bill across the finish line uh, about a year ago, we've seen companies reinvest in our local economies. Uh, we've seen companies reinvesting to build clean energy manufacturing facilities, including in places like DeSoto, Kansas, uh, where Panasonic is making a $4 billion investment to build an electric vehicle battery plant. And that's going to create over 20,000 uh, uh, new good paying jobs. And in total, I know that we're expecting to see over uh, we're expecting to see over ten billion dollars by 2030 uh, to boost clean energy manufacturing uh, in Kansas, decreasing our dependence on on other countries, including China, uh, and ensuring that our local uh, local workforce and and Kansas families can earn a good paycheck. Uh, last Congress, we also passed the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Uh, this was a major, uh, a major win. We also passed uh, a, a bill to increase domestic manufacturing, and then the Inflation Reduction Act. So, any one of those bills on its own would be monumental. It would be significant. It would be a huge amount of progress. But getting all three of those signed into law mostly in a bipartisan way, is absolutely a huge win for the American people. You know, folks at home are, are still dealing with high costs. We know that people are, uh, are dealing with, uh, with rising costs across the board. But the savings, the jobs, and, and so many other benefits that are going to be provided by these, uh, by these monumental laws, uh, especially provisions aimed at lowering health care costs and uh, addressing utility costs in the IRA, uh, these things are going to help make life easier. They're going to help people put food on the table and, and take care of their families. And I know that uh, as we uh, are looking uh, looking at the Inflation Reduction Act, and we're celebrating the 170,000 uh, electrical, mechanical, and um, construction jobs that we've seen announced. I'm also really excited about what we're what what we have coming. You know, I'm excited about the announcements to come from all of the the work that's been going on. And thank you to everybody who's here today, uh, who has spent their time advocating uh, for these policies, who are working throughout the country to deliver clean, secure, and um, healthy futures for uh, our children and our grandchildren. Uh, congratulations to everyone who's involved in all of these successes. I am looking forward to continuing to work with all of you, and I will turn the microphone back over. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Davids. And now we're excited to hear from the fabulous chair of the Senate Agriculture Committee, who I know is all in to defend the $20 billion in climate smart ag solutions from the Inflation Reduction Act. Thank you so much, Chair Stabenow. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon. And I want to thank uh, the Climate Power Coalition, first of all, for uh, bringing us together. And I think it's really clear. Let's, let's just be clear. The debate is over. The climate crisis is real. We see it everywhere we look. We see it today. We see it everywhere we look in this country and certainly in Michigan. You know, somebody who represents 95 percent of the, of the country's fresh water, we, we like to say we're the ocean without the salt. Well, the reality is that the Great Lakes are now warming faster than the oceans. And Lake Superior, the, our largest, deepest lake in the country, is now one of the five fastest warming lakes in the world. So this is beyond serious beyond serious. And last year we saw 18 separate billion dollar disasters that cost the lives of over 474 Americans and over 175 billion dollars in damages. So we don't want this to be the new normal, although we are seeing more and more of this happening all the time and that's why we did what we did a year ago. That's what the Inflation Reduction Act is all about, and that's what our investment in future actions is all about. As you know, we invested $369 billion to combat the climate crisis, the strongest investment in history. Speaking from Michigan again, we're seeing the results, home to the largest number of new clean energy projects in the country, I'm proud of it, come to Michigan.
come to, I'm just, that's my first thing, come to Michigan. Since the IRA was enacted, Michigan has attracted $21 billion in clean energy investments, moved forward with 24 new projects, and created almost 16,000 jobs. And that's just in what we did in the last year. Ford's new battery plant in Marshall will create 2,500 jobs when it opens in 2026. Nell Hydrogen is building a plant in Michigan that will create more than 500 jobs, and I could go on and on. Let me close with this. As chair of the Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry Committee, I was so pleased to lead the effort to secure over $40 billion to help our farmers and ranchers and rural communities confront the climate crisis. Almost $20 billion to help our farmers do what they want to do. I was with a farmer a little earlier today who said, except for my family, the most important thing for me as a farmer is, a, is healthy soil. What we know is that there's more carbon in the soil, healthier soil. When there's less carbon in the atmosphere, healthier atmosphere. I mean, this is a win-win situation and our farmers are leaning in. We also added $14 billion to help secure rural communities' ability, our rural electric co-ops, and this is very significant, to be able to move to renewable energy and energy efficiency, and $5 billion for climate smart forestry. Forest health, reducing wildfires, obviously, critical. We don't have to choose between protecting our planet and creating jobs and having a healthier, brighter future. We can do both. That's what we are doing. That's what Democrats have done in the Inflation Reduction Act. And we are committed to continuing to stay focused on the climate crisis. Now, I'm, I'm just looking because I think I'm did you want to? Do, we have the leader. Let me just say, I want, to bring, I want to introduce Senator Chuck Schumer. We would not be here, and that is, I'm not exaggerating just because he's my leader. We would not be here without the persistent, focused leadership, the patience and tenacity of our majority leader, Senator Chuck Schumer. Debbie, no more of that. <laughs> People remember the old Sid Caesar. I know, I know. People it's like, no more. <laughs> no, no more. No more. No more. No more. No more. Chuck Schumer. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. And look, we thank everyone for coming out here. The importance of climate is shown on a 90 degree day. We all want to be here to highlight the ERA. And you are all seeing the importance of that amazing piece of legislation. It is one. It is probably the most sick, significant action ever taken by Congress to fight the climate crisis. The most significant ever. And I first want to thank our great hosts, LCV and Climate Power, Rewiring America, the Blue Green Alliance, as well as countless other individuals and groups in the climate movement. We, the legislators here, stand on your backs because you have been there relentlessly informing America of this crisis and then leading America as to how to deal with the crisis. This is not an insoluble crisis. It's a question of will, not way. And in the IRA, with the great work of the groups that I have mentioned, we found that way in many different significant areas. And so I'm so proud of that. And I want to thank my colleagues here you just heard from Senator Stabenow, no one's done more to make agriculture, particularly regenerative agriculture, uh, important in America, where we can grow our food without damaging the climate. I want to thank Senator Smith, a true leader as well. And I know we expect Senator Wyden, who did lots of the tax work that was, that was instrumental in the IRA, as well as uh, representatives Barragan and Davids and Johnson and Stanton and so many others who helped deliver the IRA a year ago. Well, in one year, this legislation is paying huge dividends for the American people, for our economy, for the environment. Since we passed the IRA, costs are down to families. We're creating thousands of good paying union jobs and we put our country back on track to meet our goals to reduce the most harmful impacts of climate. Costs are down, 
jobs are up and the amount of carbon going into the atmosphere is down. This is all great stuff, very important stuff. And since it was, so it was a big deal last year when we announced the IRA, but it's a bigger deal now because it's actually happening. In every state we're seeing it happen, in my state, whether it's green energy, whether it's new research, whether it's becoming the largest offshore wind center in the country off Long Island. All of this is happening and in every state this can be named over and over again. The massive investments in wind and solar and EV batteries in storage, it's all happening. And you know, I'm so proud because we're seeing the American economy transform in a, way, a lay, un, in a way that it hasn't transformed since the development of electricity. And it's all coming for the good of our planet, for the good of the atmosphere, for the good of climate. And when a father knows his son or daughter, a mother knows her son or daughter is getting a job in a green, green energy, they, in a green energy job, they know they have a future. This is not one of these dying industries. It's one of these growing industries. So it's great, great in every way. In New York, in Rochester, a $370 million loan to Lycycle became the first of its kind lithium-ion battery resource, creating over close to 300 good-paying jobs and 1,000 construction jobs. In Schenectady, General Electric just announced they're investing $50 million to establish a new onshore wind turbine manufacturing facility. More good-paying jobs. And in Binghamton, we're going to become one of the centers of lithium-ion battery research and manufacturing because there's a Nobel laureate named Whittingham, a very nice guy, came to Binghamton University early, won the Nobel Prize, was lured by all these fancy universities, but he stayed at BU. And he is centering over $100 million in grants to help Binghamton become one of those centers. So a place that used to have shoemaking and Endicott Johnson and, and even IBM now sees a bright future. That's one of the great things here. So, and or by the way, because of the work of the people here, we are making this in America. We just had a big, big plant located in the Hudson Valley. They closed the plant in China. They closed the plant, to, they closed the plant in Japan and opened it up in the Hudson Valley because we told them, you gotta make it in America. So that's another significant, important part of what we are doing. So, no, no question, IRA is a game changer, a turning point. It's going to, instead of a frown on America about our future, it's going to put a smile on America about our future. And we are all so proud that we were able to get this done. And let me just say, despite the fact that we have a house that doesn't seem, not these folks, but on the other side of the aisle, a house not too friendly. If we get a seat or two more in the Senate, which I think we'll get, take back the House, keep the presidency, you're going to, ain't, you, even though we pass the IRA, you ain't going to see nothing yet. We're going to do even bigger and better then. Thank you, everybody. And now, it is my honor, if I follow this list, to call on one of the truly great leaders in the Senate, not only on climate, but on so many other things. She is so respected, she is so hardworking, and she does it all with such a nice smile and twinkle on her face, <laughs> Tina Smith. See, see what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank my friends and colleagues behind me, and I want to particularly thank the clean energy workers and the activists and the organizers that did the hard work of pulling the Inflation Reduction Act over the finish line nearly a year ago. So one year ago, we passed the most consequential climate legislation in our history. And this law has helped to create hundreds of thousands of jobs, lower energy costs, and lower carbon emissions. In one year alone, projects spurred by investments from the Inflation Reduction Act have created more than 170,000 new clean energy jobs. And I just look at what's happening in my home state of Minnesota, where we are leading the way and building an economy that cuts emissions and create jobs while lowering energy costs for Minnesotans. 
This week, Minnesota solar panel manufacturer Helene announced plans to expand their domestic solar panel production and to build a second factory in Minnesota. And longtime Minnesota manufacturer Cummins is creating over a hundred new jobs by building electrolyzers, which can turn homegrown Minnesota clean energy into green hydrogen. And Excel Energy, our large uh, investor-owned utility, is replacing its coal-fired power plant in Becker, Minnesota, with solar enough to power 100,000 homes in my in my state. These advances in the clean energy economy aren't just creating jobs, they are lowering energy costs. In Minnesota, families can save over $200 a year on their utility bills because of investments from this law. Now, President Biden and Congress promised to meet the moment of the climate crisis while rebuilding domestic supply chains and making America the leader in the clean energy transition. And I am so proud of the work that we did together. I know that this past year has demonstrated what we can deliver, that we can deliver on this promise, and we are just getting going. So thank you all for being here. And now I want to welcome to the microphone Representative Stanton from Arizona. So much. I defer to the senator from Oregon, oh. Senator White. What a gracious soul! I'm gonna make this a filibuster-free zone. <laughs> so, my, so up the intro. my my colleagues are gonna get to speak. I hope that everybody puts what we said in the old days—a freeze frame behind all these young people right here, because with this is really all about is the young people and the grassroots beat big oil on the floors of the United States Congress and didn't happen by osmosis folks these folks and other young people from every corner of the country came together and make no mistake who they beat in the four or five blocks around the Capitol, there were all kinds of lobbyists, particularly as we moved towards those summer months when we passed this bill. They were texting and they were tweeting and they were trying to scare everybody that Western civilization was gonna end if we got serious about climate change and particularly reducing carbon. And they were in their offices, those air-conditioned offices, and they won this fight. And I will tell you, we started this right after cap-and-trade went down in 2010. I was a junior member of the Finance Committee. We had had 40 years of climate gridlock. Four, zero. Cap-and-trade, no. Carbon taxes, no. Regulatory policies, no. No after no after no. And all of these folks wouldn't accept no. They insisted that we get to yes. And so we started right after Waxman Markey went done, it was right in front of me to say we can get this done through the tax code. It's clean, it's straightforward. And we went to West Virginia, we went all over the country. We said, we're gonna have one standard. The more you reduce carbon emissions, the bigger your tax savings. And so today, we have a chance to report on what has actually happened. When we were in the Finance Committee in the early summer of 2021, we thought we might get, we might get to $300 billion worth of private investment. All of the measures that my friends have been talking about are far in excess of what we said could be a really positive piece of legislation. 170,000 jobs, 270 new clean energy uh, products. And what we said is we were gonna do more in energy policy except cutting big checks to big oil. We have done it. There's no turning back, folks. There's a rear guard action, particularly, that Mr. Congressman Stanton and others are gonna take on in the House that would like to do it. 
but we're not going back. And the reason why is because of these signs. Clean energy economic boom. Delivering clean energy jobs. That's what this is all about. People said after 2010 and 40 years worth of failure that we couldn't do it because of the incredible grassroots effort, particularly of America's young people. We're on our way. We're not going back. God bless. Woo! No. And I get to introduce in the spirit of collegiality and the language of the Senate, my distinguished colleague from the House, Congressman Stanton. Thank you very much, Coach Wyden. We're fired up now after that. That's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, I represent Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, when I left on Sunday, it was 119 degrees. So this is a nice, cool day for me here in, uh, in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon. I am so glad to be here for this wonderful celebration of the first anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act. We all knew then what this legislation meant. Jobs, jobs, and more good jobs. And the numbers don't lie. Over the last year, $8.3 billion in private investment in my home state of Arizona alone in solar electric vehicles, and battery manufacturing. Already, almost 13,000 good, high-paying jobs created throughout my state. Don't just take my word for it. Just a few months ago, I met with the CEO of Core Power, an innovative battery manufacturer. They are building a facility in Arizona to produce battery cells that will replace up to 12 million gallons of gasoline every year. He told me that the Inflation Reduction Act was the lift that they needed to expand operations and core power has committed core power has committed to partnering with Arizona colleges to train and hire local worker workers there are already 13 more projects just like this one that have broken ground in Arizona in the last year this town has been talking about bringing manufacturing jobs back to the United States for decades and guess what Democrats actually did it we are fighting inflation, improving our supply chain, strengthening America's national security by reducing our dependence on foreign energy. But while economic lift is undeniable, this bill was also the largest and most significant investment to fight climate change in American history. And no place has been spared the impacts of climate change. Arizona is on the front lines. In my hometown of Phoenix, we are in the midst of a tragic record-breaking heat wave. Yesterday was our 26th straight day above 110 degrees. Today will be the 27th straight day. These investments couldn't come soon enough. We are on a path to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 40% by the end of this decade, and that is getting us closer to the commitments that we have made as a country. We only got this bill across the finish line because of great support from environmental advocacy groups like the ones here represented today, businesses, and of course our friends in uh, labor. And it is my honor, I get to serve with so many wonderful members of the United States uh, Congress. Um, this way? Okay, I got two of them right, uh, right around me. I'm not sure who to introduce. Uh, a real leader that I've had a chance to serve with uh, uh, on the Judiciary Committee for two terms, a guy who was holding the Supreme Court accountable, and I'm proud of that work, Congressman Hank Johnson. Thank you, Greg. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, it's a hot day, uh, and nobody needs to tell you why it's so hot. And by the way, I regret to inform you that it's going to get hotter as the years go by and that's because of mankind's reliance on fossil fuels and it has been a long time coming for Congress to finally take action and for an administration to get behind the effort to create a new economy and a new paradigm for energy use in this country leading the world in the conversion from fossil fuel to green, renewable, clean energy sources. And so I want to thank the people at Climate Power uh, for being behind that effort on a long-term basis. It's basically been uh, young people who have uh, led this effort unsung for many years, and then you had a few who got elected to Congress, and there'll be a few more of you 
getting elected to Congress at some point, and they drove the narrative, the Green New Deal. And uh, finally, everything kind of coalesced, and we were able to pass uh, President Biden's investment uh, uh, reduction act, inflation reduction act, excuse me. And the inflation reduction act is our first step towards this transition to uh, green new renewable energy. And as everyone already knows, this landmark legislation invested hundreds of billions of dollars into modernizing our economy, helping America address the climate crisis, all while creating more than 100,000 clean energy jobs. And by the way, all of these bees that uh, seem to be uh, focusing on me for some <laughs> reason, I'm happy to, to, to see that because bees are on the decline in America due to uh, climate change and other issues. And so I'm glad that the bees are out in full force, buzzing around, letting us know that they want to be here too. But uh, the, uh, this Inflation Reduction Act is going to create more than 100,000 clean energy jobs. The law has already brought close to $19 billion in investment for 22 projects and created almost 17,000 new jobs in the state of Georgia, which I'm proud to hail from. That's just within this past year. We're celebrating the one-year anniversary of the IRA today. So it'll bring in more billions in large-scale clean power generation and storage in investments to Georgia between now and 2030. But the investments don't just represent the future of clean energy, but mean dramatic investments in people. So I'm going to end my remarks now by thanking you all for being out here. Thank the press, the media, uh, all of the staffers out here who help us get our work done all of the uh, interest groups, particularly the young people who are standing behind us in this hot sun, it's almost over, y'all. <laughs> and last but not least, my colleagues uh, from Congress, House and Senate, who have been instrumental in bucking uh, the uh, fossil fuel lobby and doing what's best for the uh, future of this country. And with that, I will now yield to my friend, uh, Congresswoman Barragan. Well, good afternoon. I'm Congress Member Nanette Barragan, Chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. I want to thank Climate Power, LCV, and Rewiring America, all of um, those who help fight to get us across the finish line and labor. Uh, thank you for having us something to celebrate today, uh, which is, of course, the one-year anniversary. I stand here today with my House and Senate colleagues to talk about the positives and what has happened in that short time, and the bottom line is jobs jobs and jobs. It's no accident that unemployment is at its lowest level in half a century. Um, in California alone, the Inflation Reduction Act, um, we have seen in the last year $11.9 billion in clean energy investments for California. Uh, we've helped, it's helped create and move forward thousands of good paying clean energy jobs in California. Now these jobs will provide economic security for hardworking families, including Latino families. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus is um, interested in making sure we're advocating for policies that are impacting our communities across this country. And we've seen that Latino communities across the country have seen direct investments from the Inflation Reduction Act, um, as a, and that has resulted in a, in a number of new clean energy uh, projects. Uh, projects have delivered $28.5 billion in investments and over 35 thousand jobs. These investments will also reduce air pollution in Latino and other underserved communities and improve public health. This is reason alone to invest and continue to invest in climate. The IRA was the first step, but as you know, we got to continue to push and fight to make sure we're doing everything to address climate, to address 
environmental injustices, and that begins with starting investments in these communities and creating these jobs. So this one-year anniversary is not just a celebration, but it's really a reminder of the work Democrats in Congress have done and have to do uh, to make sure we continue on this path. So everybody, thank you so much. I can't wait to see what the second year and years ahead brings. And with that, I have the honor of introducing uh, from Labor and the IBEW, Ricardo Alba Carries. Is that right? Yeah, close. Close. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for inviting me to be a part of this event, and thank you to everyone who worked so hard to get us where we are today. My name is Rico Albuquerque. I'm an inside wireman and the political director from IBW Local 24, and I'm an 11 year member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I'm proud to be here today representing more than 2,200 IBW Local 24 members from Frederick to Baltimore all the way to Ocean City. And we're here to celebrate that in just under a year since its passage, the Inflation Reduction Act has unleashed a made in America renewable energy boom. More than 170,000 good paying, family sustaining new energy jobs have been announced in communities from coast to coast. In Baltimore, Local 24 is on the leading edge of the growth potential of offshore wind power, which is key to the Biden-Harris administration's plans to decarbonize the electric grid. Thanks to a $2 million training grant from the administration, we're already incorporating offshore wind turbine construction into our training programs. In Baltimore and across the country, renewable energy jobs are uplifting American workers. In partnership with the Biden-Harris administration, Local 24 is working to provide opportunities for underrepresented communities to find good jobs and careers in industry like offshore wind. We're increasing our outreach to Baltimore City residents and connecting folks to pre-apprenticeships that give them exposure to the trades. Thanks to the Biden-Harris administration, companies are incentivized to participate in registered apprenticeship programs and build in strong labor standards. This will ensure a transition to a clean energy economy that centers on union workers and working families. These policies are popular because people understand the value of building prosperity from the bottom up and the middle out, and not just helping CEOs and the people at the top. In its first year, the Inflation Reduction Act has been a massive success for our country and for workers nationwide. We have to continue to support these workers as we build towards a new energy future. And look, this is only the beginning. Ultimately, millions of new energy jobs will provide for American families for decades to come. Every family will benefit from affordable, renewable energy that will lower their costs, contribute to a cleaner environment, and a safer and more secure future. American workers and our unions are the key to building the new energy economy, and we're ready to get to work. Thank you very much. And I'm going to introduce uh, Jason Walsh, the Executive Director of the Blue Green Alliance. In addition to being a middle-aged bald man who should not be standing in this sun without a hat, I am the executive director of the Blue Green Alliance. We are a national partnership of labor unions and environmental organizations. The principle that brings our partners together is a bedrock belief that we should not have to choose between good jobs and a clean environment. We can and must have both. The Inflation Reduction Act makes that principle real. And as this report from Climate Power shows, the law's investments are already delivering for American workers. In particular, for the blue collar workers who have been on the hurting end of economic changes and bad policies in this country for decades until now. The IRA contains a broad range of distinct, strategically targeted investments but what most of those investments boil down to, essentially, is making and building a hell of a lot of stuff. And the biggest share of the jobs created will not require a four-year college degree, but rather high-quality training where workers can often earn while they learn to be electricians, yeah. to be machinists, to be laborers, to be pipe fitters, to be painters, to be steel workers, to be operating engineers, and other skilled crafts. At the same time, we want to be sure that the jobs created by this transformative law are good paying, safe, career jobs that can lift families into the middle class and keep them there. 
And to do that, we need workers in them to be union or have an unimpeded path to unionization if they so choose. The report shows that many of these investments are in red states. This is a law for all Americans. It should be noted that in many of this, these states, laws are on the books designed to make it more challenging for workers to organize unions and where union density is lower as a result. But let's be clear about a fundamental fact. Every worker in this country, workers in red states, workers in blue states, have the legal right to organize into unions, to collectively bargain with their employers for better wages, benefits, and working conditions. And that right will be protected and enforced because it's the law of the land. And if any of the companies making these announcements based on incentives in the IRA have any doubts about the legislative intent behind this law to create high quality, accessible union jobs with these taxpayer dollars, talk to the Democratic members of Congress who were here today and who got this law passed without a single Republican vote. I think I'm the last one, right? So in closing, let me just say this. We're just getting started. Right? Money has barely hit the ground. We are talking about 170,000 jobs today. Get used to talking about millions. The analysis that we commissioned from economists at the University of Massachusetts estimates up to 9 million jobs created over a decade by this legislation. So we're going to win on climate, we're going to win on jobs, we're going to win on justice. And there's no going back. Thank you everyone for coming.